Well, former Bain SA partner Athel Williams testified at the state capture inquiry this week. He told the commission that Bain had several meetings with former President Jacob Zuma. Bain is a U.S.-based management consultancy that was appointed by former SARS Commissioner Tom Moyani. Williams uh, now joins us to uh, speak about his testimony and also related issues uh, around that. Mr. Ethel Williams, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much uh, indeed for coming in to speak to you. I'm taking an earpiece and I can't hear you from, from so far away because we're social distancing, of course. We're responsible. I, I, I don't want to go into too much detail about the testimony. We've covered it in depth here on ENCA. You can go and find it on enca.com. I think a lot of people are uh, lauding you for coming out and blowing the whistle. It's what you did. A lot of people commending you for that. How are you feeling now that it's all sunk in? I have, Gareth, I have been overwhelmed by the positive reaction. Um, I really didn't know which way it was going to go. But um, you know, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling relieved in a way. Um, you know, I never had a narrative I wanted to share. I had a bunch of documents that I wanted to disclose. And um, the, the, the Zonda Commission investigators asked me to string together those documents um, to make sense of them. And so that's how that narrative emerged. So I wasn't out to, to focus on anyone in particular. Um, it was just what was in the documents. And so I've been, I know I've been, um, there have been affidavits filed and statements made about you know, my, my um, hidden agenda. And there is no hidden agenda. It was literally the documents I had, what, what they said to me, and that's what I've shared. So I am relieved that that part of, of the, 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 I guess, the unearthing of these facts is passed. But now second phase starts, which is around cross-examination and potential retaliation. Let's talk about retaliation. Were you, were you nervous? Were you scared, perhaps, that morning before you stepped up and took the oath? Were you nervous? I wasn't nervous on the day, strangely. I, I, I prepared really well. I, I knew the materials. I wrote my whole affidavit myself. So I knew the materials quite well. Um, I was petrified in the months leading up to my testimony because I, I thought that's when I, where I was vulnerable. Um, I mean, fear. How vulnerable I, how? I, you know, I, I received legal threats. So I, I received clear threats that said, if you speak, um, you are breaching um, confidentiality agreements, and so we will take that seriously. I received um, financial threats around um, you owe us money or there's money you have to pay back or they'll be coming after you financially. I received no physical threats, but just the logic to me said, if parties are willing to go to such extreme um, efforts to silence me, where, where might that end? And so my wife and I hold up in our, in our flat in Cape Town for months. I just never left um, out of fear that um, someone would want to silence me physically as well. And yet you still went ahead uh, with that knowledge, with that fear, and you still went in front of the nation, in front of the world, and, and you gave your testimony. A lot of people are, as I said, commending you for this, but a lot of people are asking why. They're asking why would I do this. Um, I think we do things sometimes because we feel a sense of compulsion. For me, like many South Africans, we've watched this corruption eat away at our society. And, and for me personally, it was always a question I asked myself is what can I do about this? And at first, what I thought I could do about it was to train as a moral philosopher, to train in applied ethics. And my plan was to go and train business leaders and public leaders on how to make ethical decisions, how to act out ethical leadership. That was my goal. Um, but with that mindset of we need, as individuals need to act ethically, when I saw what was happening at Bain, there was just, I had no choice, really. Um, my own personal ethics compelled me to speak up in the interest of truth in our country, Gareth, because without truth, there can be no justice. And a lot of people have said to me, Ethel, but, you know, will justice come of this? And in many ways, I'm saying that's up to the justice system. For me, I wanted to, to disclose truth. And I think that's the kind of brave person I think we need more of in South Africa, of saying I'll act, not only my, my self-interest. I gain nothing from this. In fact, I lose a lot. But to act in the interest of our country. I'm sure you've seen the articles uh, where Tom Moyani, the former uh, SARS boss, uh, SA Revenue Service boss, saying uh, that, that you're angry, disgruntled and dissatisfied, but more to the point that uh, there's a report saying you agreed with him. Is that correct? I, I um, sarcastically agreed with that description of me being disgruntled at the, at the, at the Zonda Commission because um, not what he had intended with that. I, I sort of said disgruntled means angry and dissatisfied. And I am angry and dissatisfied with corruption in our country. I'm angry with what he did at SARS. 
So I am disgruntled. I'm disgruntled with the, with the state capture and corruption and the lack of accountability um, of those who have been involved, who have masterminded it, who have enacted it. Um, so yes, to Mr. Moyani, I am disgruntled, not for the reasons he thinks I am. Final question to you, uh, Mr. Williams. What's your, what's your hope for this inquiry? It's, it's set to wrap up uh, soon, eventually. It's a bit of a moving goalpost at this point, but it yeah. will eventually. It's costing a fortune. What's your ultimate hope? Men in or people in orange overalls or, or simply just justice for those who've been defrauded? Gareth, we absolutely have to get to the point with people in orange overalls. Um, I, I think this process of truth, I think there's value in truth, intrinsic value in truth of just knowing what happened. I think our country has moved forward vastly, but just knowing what happened. But we must also get to the point where those who are guilty um, are prosecuted and are put behind bars. Because otherwise, I don't think we move forward as a country. I appreciate your time coming to speak to me as well. One of our uh, first guests on this show since uh, lockdown as well with the social distancing. But uh, Mr. Ethel Williams, I thank you uh, for coming in South Africa. I think thanks you as well for your bravery and state capture uh, inquiry uh, joining us here on ENCA.